Bijan worth drafting 101? Who should you take to win your league? This and more will be discussed in today's video on Endzone Sports. Okay, let's go. If you like what you hear, we'd greatly appreciate a like on our content, and please subscribe for more. Let us know down below which rookie you're wanting to draft this season and who uh, who you're going to reach on. That being said, let's kick it off. Yep, starting off with running backs. Obviously, Bijan Robinson. You know, he's been the dark horse through all of the uh, preseason, um, going into the NFL draft as well. So again, he's a versatile running back one option. Um, he does have some pass catching upside. I've heard that he's been lined up all over the place in Atlanta. I think that they're going to be a pretty heavy run first scheme. Um, so again, last season, you know, the Falcons running backs were number one in yards in yards per carry, as well as they were top three in EPA per rush, um, success rate and first downs, um, as, as well as touchdowns per rush. Next up, we got Jameer Gibbs. Uh, he should be a replacement for DeAndre Swift in terms of production, uh, even sharing the backfield with David Montgomery. Gibbs elite combination of receiving ability and run after the catch make him a PPR uh, demon. Gibbs had a career best 44 catches, averaging 10 yards a catch in his one season at Alabama. Next up, I got Con uh, Kendra Miller. Miller is a solid backup, but might struggle to get some touches in the pass first offense. Uh, however, Miller is currently listed as a third string behind Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams, um, but I do think that a suspension is upcoming for Alvin Kamara, so Miller might be able to step foot on the field a lot sooner than we expect. I think he's a good waiver wire ad, um, and again, I think he has some workhorse upside. Uh, he did have some solid production at TCU this past season where he had over 1,400 yards and 17 touchdowns. Up next, we got Devon A-Chain out of Texas A&M um, on the Dolphins now. It just matches their offense. Speed, speed, speed. Everyone knows that Mike Medan loves his underside speedy weapons, and nothing changes from the addition of a third running back from Texas A&M, Devon A-Chain. He ran a 4.32 40-yard dash, and he should fight, or he should fit right in with the rest of McDaniel's sports cars. <laughs> I expect him to project similar numbers to former Dolphins running back Raheem Mostert. A-Chain is a high upside flex player in deeper leagues, um, and he also has some boom potential, but might struggle with some competition for touches at the start of his career. Up next, we got a guy I like a lot, Zach Charbonnet. Uh, he's on the Seattle Seahawks. I think he, he's a true workhorse um, with the production to prove it. His biggest hurdle is obviously going to be fighting with, you know, you know, fighting for touches with Kenneth Walker. You know, Walker burst out on the scene last season and earned the starting role, but you might see a potential injury that might set him back. Being Charbonnet, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a solid waiver wire and could help you win some games. Uh, some other guys to note um, for the waiver wire, I would take a look at Dwayne McBride. I mean, Dalvin Cook is a you know potential trade or cut candidate. Uh, same goes with Joe Mixon out in Cincinnati, so that, that way you should have your eyes on Chase Brown. Uh, Roshan Johnson um, on the Chicago Bears, I know that they had Deontay Foreman and Khalil Herbert, but I think Johnson is better than both of those guys, so he's someone to keep your eyes on. And lastly, we have Zach Evans on the Rams and Eric Gray on the Giants. Again, they're both sitting behind some pretty injury-prone uh, running backs, so always good to keep your eyes on those guys. All right, now we're going to kick it off to the wide receiver group. Brandon, give us your, give us your take. So leading off with our number one receiver, Jordan Addison. With Thielen's departure and Dalvin Cook's future uncertain, Addison seem, seems to be in prime position to succeed as the wide receiver two in Minnesota. Thielen was a red zone menace, and I could see Addison filling the gap, and I expect Addison to have a 6,809 touchdown season. Carrying on, JSN at number two with DK and Lockett. This is going to be a solid wide receiver trio, one of the best in the league. JSN will have a natural fit in the slot where he excelled at Ohio State. He'll have to compete for targets. I mean, there's there's a lot of good hands in that wide receiver room, but I could see him producing in the slot quite well. The only uncertain factor is Geno and the young offensive line of the Seahawks and if they can maintain what they did last year. I could see him probably going 80, 1106 touchdowns on the season. At number three, we've got Jonathan Mingo. The Carolina Panthers invested heavily to select their guy, Bryce Young. Some would say maybe sold the farm a little bit, including shipping off DJ Moore, which with Moore gone and a hodgepodge of replacements, Mingo has a serious shot at taking the number one spot alongside Adam Thielen. I think Mingo will have a great rookie year, and my guess is 75, 905 touchdowns on the year. Carrying on with number four, we've got Zay Flowers. He'll have great 
opportunity to work alongside OBJ and experience vet and maybe even learn something from him. With Lamar coming back healthy, I would not be surprised if the Ravens push more to the passing game to extend his playing career, especially with their major investment they just made in the guy. Flowers will have to compete with their tight end Mark Andrews. O- OBJ has previously um, mentioned and Rashad Bateman, but he should still find ways to produce on the field. Steve Smith says Flowers reminds him of his game. And with that being said, I could see Flowers achieving high yards per catch on limited targets. Look for a 45, 700, two touchdown year. And wrapping up the wide receivers, we're looking at Tank Dell. The Houston Texans had a solid draft and Dell being one of our favorite picks for them. Dell and Stroud have grown some a relationship and build some chemistry during the pre-draft process and i could see that clicking well throughout the year he'll most likely have to compete with mechie in the slot for reps but some say mechie could be forced to play more in the outside absent we're outside of or the outside absent of brandon cook sorry about that i expect dell to catch 5603 touchdowns and paul you want to wrap it up with the tight ends who do you think all right taking a look at the tight ends here number one uh, go figure. We have Dalton Kincaid drafted by Buffalo. Um, he's an ideal kind of fantasy upside tight end. Um, by far the best pass catcher in the group of the 2023 rookies. Uh, Kade's value or Kincaid's value also increased by dr- being drafted um, in a high power pass first scheme with the superstar quarterback in Josh Allen. Um, it is expected for the Bills to to in, uh, use Kincaid to justify that first overall selection. Um, the question is kind of what is his role going to be? Uh, the Bills do have a good tight end already in Dawson Knox. Uh, so Kincaid uh, probably is going to get more reps in that slot role um, and then maybe kind of uh, out snap uh, Dawson, you know, as a number, number one tight end here. Moving down to number two, we got Sam Laporta drafted um, in Detroit. Uh, Laporta matches up too well with uh, how TJ Hawkinson, um, but it's not quite that situ- same situation. Uh, for the most part, TJ Hawkinson was drafted um, as a number one target. Um, he was drafted in the top 10 and during his his draft. Uh, currently, Laporta will have to earn his uh, status. Um, he will have a, a good window in that four, uh, that first six weeks. Um, should be the number two target behind Amon Ross St. Brown uh, before the eventual number two target, Jameson Williams, um, is set to return from his suspension. Um, it's rare for rookies to start off super hot, so having that adjustment period, um, it's going to be a little tough for him to get used to the speed of the game. Look for Laporta to be a uh, late draft edition, possible waiver wire add um, for deeper leagues. Uh, coming in at number three, we have Michael Mayer. Uh, Mayer slots in to be the projected starter in uh, Las Vegas, and he should be a good one at that. Uh, the Raiders scheme works best when a tight end, uh, with a tight end threat who can work the middle of the field. Uh, predicting what Mayer will do is uh, pretty seems pretty simple. Um, when you look at the Raiders attack, it's easier for some of the some of the tight ends to work that middle of the field. Um, then when you have a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo, who can't really have that, he doesn't have a super great arm, so he can't get the deep ball. Um, he did play with a great uh, tight end at, in San Francisco uh, with George Kittle. Kittle Mayer's uh, play style is very similar, although uh, Kittle is a much better, uh, much more effective run blocker. Garoppolo's lack of deep ball uh, tend to le- uh, lead him to work short to intermediate routes. Um, this plays nicely into a tight end's favor. When looking at the numbers, Kittle averaged five catches per game for 61 yards. Look to add Mayer and around six to eight in standard redraft leagues. Moving along, we got Darnell Washington. Although Washington is an absolute weapon and a steal in the late round pick, Pittsburgh is not a team uh, that, as far as fantasy concerns, that they need a tight end uh, since they already have an established Pat Fryermuth there. Uh, Washington also must compete for receptions with former Bulldog George uh, George Pickens and other stars uh, such as Deontay Johnson and Najee Harris. Uh, look for Washington on the waiver wire for a potential fill-in if Firemuth does go down. Uh, some other notable additions that you should keep your eye on for that waiver wire is going to be the Green Bay Packers duo for rookies, uh, Luke Musgrove and Tucker Craft, as well as um, Dallas's selection and Luke Shoemaker. Awesome. Yeah, well, we just got we just gave you the uh, take of what we think our 2023 rookie uh, projections will be for this fantasy season. Uh, again, go ahead and give us a like and a comment below. Let us know your thoughts. Um, and if you want more, feel free to subscribe and uh, we'll keep it going. Thanks, y'all.